This lecture covers types of binary relation properties like reflexive, irreflexive, symmetric, antisymmetric, asymmetric, and transitive. Here we have a set M with elements 1, 2, and 3. Uh, let me define a relation R. So R is less than or equal to. Now for this if I form the ordered pairs, let's start with 1. 1 less than or equal to 1, yes, 1 is equal to 1, so I can include that. 1 less than 2 and 1 less than 3. So 1 less than 2, 1 less than 3, so I can include both of them. Then 2 less than or equal to 1, no. 2 less than or equal to 2, yes. 2 less than or equal to 3, yes. How about 3? 3 less than 1, no. 3 less than 2, no. 3 less than or equal to 3, yes, it's equal. Alright, so we formed a relation that's less than or equal to on this particular set. Now look at the uh, numbers. So for 1 we have 1 1, for 2 we have 2 2 and for 3 we have 3 3. So a relation in which for uh, for every element in the x if we have x comma x then that particular relation is called as a reflexive relation. So I could say reflexive as for all x uh, if x belongs to a particular set M, it means that there should be element x comma x which should belong to this particular relation. So here it is R. So that sort of relation is reflexive. Now let's take uh, another relation, say S, uh, which has 1, 2, 2, 1 and 2, 3. Now is this reflexive? Let's test it. 1, we don't have 1, 1. We don't even have 2, 2 and even 3, 3. None of them are there. So a relation in which for, for every x, if there is no x comma x at all, then such sort of relation is called irreflexive. Irreflexive, which says that for all x, uh, x belongs to the set implies that x comma x should not belong to the set here it is s so that that relation is called a irreflexive relation uh, let's take another uh, relation t uh, and t is uh, 1 1 then 2 2 2 3 is it uh, reflexive? Let's test. For 1, we have 1, 1. For 2, we have 2, 2. But 3, there is no 3, 3. So therefore, this is not reflexive. This is not reflexive. Does this mean that it is irreflexive? Uh, irreflexive says that there should not be x, comma x at all. But 1, comma 1 and 2, comma 2 are already there. So this is not even a reflexive. So reflexive, if, if it's not reflexive, it doesn't mean that it is a reflexive. It can be none of them. So in general, any relation could be either reflexive or irreflexive or none of them. Sometimes it becomes easier to identify the relation properties based on the diagram. That's, that's either a graph or a matrix notation. So I'll show you how we do it. Uh, if you go by matrix, so here we have 1, 1, 1, 2 is also there, 1, 3 is there, 2, 1 is not there, 2, 2 is there, 2, 3 is there, then uh, 3, 1 and 3, 2 are not there, but 3, 3 is there. Just focus at the diagonal elements. So if the matrix has all the diagonal elements, it means that it's a reflexive relation. Now if we go by graphs, we could do it something like this. Uh, here the elements are 1, then 
two, then three. So one to one, so I can mark this, then one to two, then one to three, then two to two, two to three, then three to three. Just look at the self loops. For one, this is self loop. For two, this is self loop. For three, is also self loop. So if there are self loops for every element, then it is reflexive. So that's the method of identification. Go either by properties, test them individually, or try to put a matrix and look at the diagonal elements, or draw the uh, graph and uh, look at the self loops. So that's about reflex and reflexive. Before we close this topic, uh, before we move on to the next property, let's also list out the examples. Um, reflexive and reflexive. In reflexive, uh, equality less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. All these have reflexive property. Uh, less than and greater than. These are irreflexive. Symmetric relation. A relation R in a set S is symmetric if for every X and Y in S, whenever there is a relation X to Y, then there should be a relation Y to X. It just means that if there's an element X comma Y, there should be an element Y comma X. Look at this. Here we have set S. And the elements are 1, 2, 3, 4. And this relation defined on it. It has elements 1, 2, 2, 1, and 3, 3. Symmetric relation says that if there is xy, there should be yx. So for 1, 2, we have 2, 1. And 3, 3, it maps to itself. That itself is a reverse element. So for every element, there is a reverse element. Therefore, this is symmetric. Now look at this. Here we have 1, 2, 1, 4, 3, 3. So for 1, 2, there should be 2, 1, not there. For uh, 1, 4, there should be 4, 1, but again, it's not there. But 3, 3, yes, it can be mapped to itself. So this is not symmetric. And this type of relation where for every element, there is no reverse element except when x equal to y then this sort of relation is called anti-symmetric now look at r3 1 2 3 1 and 4 1 so 1 2 there is no 2 1 for 3 1 there is no 1 3 and for 4 1 there is no 1 4 and this is a relation where there is no reverse element as well as x equal to y. So this sort of relation is called as asymmetric relation. This is slightly confusing topic. So be a little careful while solving the questions based on symmetric, anti-symmetric and asymmetric relation. Sometimes it is convenient to identify these relations with graphs. Whenever you see a bi-directional graph, something like this, and with self loops, this is symmetric. And unidirectional graph with self loops allowed, this becomes anti-symmetric. And if it is only unidirectional and there are no self loops at all, then this is asymmetric. There are a few points to note. Can there be a relation which is both symmetric and anti-symmetric?
yes it is possible uh, i'll give you an example suppose if we have a set with 1 2 3 4 and there's a relation r uh, that's 1 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 is it symmetric yes it is symmetric what about anti symmetric yes because they are all all equal elements 1 1 2 2 3 3 therefore this is symmetric plus anti symmetric one more important point every asymmetric relation is also an anti symmetric relation so that's asymmetric can be thought as a subset of anti-symmetric. Transitive. A relation R in a set S is transitive if for every X and Y in S, whenever there is a relation from X to Y and Y to Z, there should be a relation X to Z as well. Let's take an example. Here we have a set S, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and a relation R defined on this particular set. Transitive says that if there is x, y and y, z, there should be x, z. So let's look at here. Here we have 1, 2, and 2, 3. So there should be 1, 3 yes it is there and look here 1 3 and 3 4 there should be 1 4 so for these two 1 4 is over here anything else yeah we have uh, 2 3 and 3 4 and it should be 2 4 that's over here so for every x y and y z there is x z so this relation is a transitive relation and here are a few examples which follow this uh, one is equality less than or equal to greater than or equal to and even the subset these are a few examples for transitive relation so that's the end for uh, properties on relations now I have a test for your grasping power suppose there is a relation which is symmetric and transitive does it guarantee that it is reflexive? Think, think for a moment. No, not always. I'll give you an example. Think of null set. This is symmetric and transitive, but it is not reflexive because there are no elements at all. One more. Suppose I have a set A with elements 1, 2, and 3. And let's say I define a relation R, which is 1, 2, 2, 1, then 1, 1, and 2, 2. This particular relation, what I've written, is symmetric as well as transitive. You can check it. But this is not reflexive because uh, for 1, we have 1, 1, for 2, we have 2, 2. But 3, there is no 3, 3. Therefore, this is not reflexive. Just by knowing that a relation is symmetric and transitive, we cannot guarantee that it is reflexive, like in these two cases. Here is one more. A relation is reflexive and symmetric. Can it be transitive? No, it cannot be. Just take an example and check it. You can make it by yourself that it can. It, it's not possible at all. Here's a question asked in gate 1998. The binary relation R 1 1 2 1 2 2 2 3 2 4 3 1 3 2 3 3 3 4 on a set 1 2 3 4. They're asking you to check the properties and see which one actually matches this particular relation. So to solve this, it's easier to represent it in, in a graph. So let's write 
the nodes now is it reflexive no because for four there is no self loop so it is not reflexive is it re reflexive no because all the three of the nodes have self loops so it is not even a reflexive is it transitive let's check now from here three to two and two to four and we have three to four then two to three and three to one so two to one yeah it is following transitive property so it's neither reflexive nor reflexive or transitive i think this is the correct option